Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reading Veterans Day 2023. My name is Will Vallier, and I'm the Veteran Service Officer for the Town of Reading. Today, we are gathered to celebrate veterans of Reading and those that came before us especially those World War I veterans that are inscribed upon this boulder. This morning, I would like to thank the select board, Jacqueline McCarty, and other select board members who have joined us here today. Our guest speaker, Brigadier General Leonard Condotruck, 26th Yankee Division historian. In addition to, I'd like to recognize Fidel Maltz, our town manager. We are also privileged to have us with us here today, members of the DAV Post, 37, Ed Martinez, Commander. Also, Commander Brian McCormick of the Reading American Legion, Post 62, which is 104 years old uh, today. As their building was donated to them on November 11, 1919. Lastly, and most importantly, I want to welcome the Gold Star family members and veterans of all eras who honor us with their presence here today. Like to start the invocation by the rock. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we pause this day to remember the commitment of all veterans, especially as we dedicate a flagpole in memory of Lieutenant McGrath, we remember all who have answered the nation's call to serve in the attempt to make the world a better place. Help us with your wisdom, O Lord, to deal with moral clarity the chaos we find so prevalent in our world today. As we remember our veterans, reward all who have not only given the ultimate sacrifice for freedom, but also those who have served and continue to serve our country at home and around the world, ensuring our freedom and making the world a better place. O Lord, we ask you in your love and mercy to look over and protect the families of our veterans, Grant also that America and all nations may continue to work for peace and justice. And bless us all in your service and help us follow you more faithfully. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Rock. Please remain standing. We we'll present the colors playing the national anthem. <laughs> Thank you, Reading Memorial High School Band. We appreciate that. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you Fidel Maltz, Reading's town manager. Fidel. Good morning, everyone. I stand before you today with immense pride and gratitude. On this Veterans Day, we come together to honor and celebrate the brave men and women who have selflessly served our nation. 
Reading is a town steeped in history and resilience, and it's a place where community matters. From the halls of our Reading Memorial High School to the heart of our neighborhoods, veterans' contributions are woven into the, into the fabric of our town. This, of course, is a bittersweet time for me as I uh, transition out of serving our great community as your town manager. I will leave our town with a deep appreciation of our veterans who left their homes to defend our freedoms, uphold our values, and safeguard our democracy. Your service and dedication inspire us all. To our veterans, your service is etched into Reading's heart. You have stood tall in the face of adversity and your sacrifices resonate across the, the town. Please stand and let us recognize you with a heartfelt applause. Let us also remember the families, the spouses who held down the fort, the parents who waited anxiously, and the children who missed bedtime stories. Their sacrifices are the silent strength behind our veterans. This town will continue to work tirelessly for our veterans. Reading is a town that honors its heroes, not just on Veterans Day, but every day. In closing, let us not just offer a thank you, let us engage and listen and learn from our veterans. Their stories are our shared legacy, the triumphs, the struggles, and the unbreakable bonds forged in service. By carrying their stories forward, we ensure that their legacy lives on. Thank you, veterans. Thank you for your service, your sacrifice, and your enduring spirit. May ready forever be a beacon of gratitude and support for all those who serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Next up to the podium will be our select chair, Jacqueline McCarthy, to read the Governor's Proclamation. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Thank you, veterans. We are grateful for your service. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's earliest days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11th, 1918, after four years of conflict, the armistice was signed in the forest of Compiègne by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. And whereas, since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas, in November 2023, the world will commemorate the 105th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m., November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Whereas there are approximately 300,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who have served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who serve their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And, that, that, and now, therefore, I, Maura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2023 to be Veterans Day and urge all residents in the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the, at the Executive Chamber in Boston the 11th day of November in the year 2023 and of the independence of the United States of America the 247th by Her Excellency Maura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth, Kimberly Driscoll, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. 
God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCarthy. Appreciate it. Next to the podium will be Jill Mayberry, United States Air Force veteran, to read a House resolution. Jill? Good morning, veterans and residents and family and friends of Reading. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Reading's veterans in recognition of your service to our nation as Reading commemorates Veterans Day with the dedication of the U.S. Army Lieutenant T.J. McGrath flagpole and the rededication of the World War I Memorial Stone. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this day, the 11th day, November 2023, at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, by Ronald Mariano, Speaker of the House, offered by State Representative Bradley H. Jones, Jr. and State Representative Richard M. Haggerty. Thank you, Joe. At this time, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker and Yankee Division historian. National Commander. National Commander. Brigadier Jill, General, retired United States Army, lettered country truck. General. Good morning, Reading. Good morning, fellow veterans. Good morning, morning, ladies and gentlemen. All ships at sea, firefighters, police, thank you for inviting me this morning. I am Len Connertuk. National Commander of the Yankee Division Veterans. And you're going to hear the word, the term Yankee Division for the rest of, the, of my remarks. I'm the National Commander, and I'm also the historian for the Yankee Division. The Yankee Division is the nickname for the 26th Infantry Division. During World War I, it was made up of National Guard units from all over New England. And from 1923 to 1993, it was made up of Massachusetts National Guard units. In honor of its service, during World I, World War II, and the Cold War, Route 128 is forever known as the Yankee Division Highway. And a few years ago, we had new signs put up. The mission of the Yankee Division veterans is to perpetuate the history and service of the 26th Infantry Division. While today is Veterans Day, it was originally designated as Armistice Day in commemoration of the cessation of hostilities at 1100 hours, 11 November 1918. World War I was called the Great War because of its size, scope, and the huge number of deaths. Like all towns of Massachusetts, Reading sent its young men and for the first time young women into war. 413 men, three women who were all nurses on the front line. 14 died in the war and we honor their service and sacrifice. And seven of those served in the 26th Yankee Division. The Reading Militia Company was disbanded in 1840. Young men who wanted to serve in the Mass National Guard from Reading had to go over to Wakefield and join Company A of the 6th Infantry Regiment, which was composed of Wakefield and young Reading men. They were the first to serve on active duty in World War I. Company A was mobilized on 30 March 1917 to guard vital infrastructure in Massachusetts. They were the first among the first Americans to serve on active duty in World War I. Company A was mobilized and spent four months uh, guarding critical infrastructure from sabotage. For four months, it remained on duty and was ordered to Westfield, Massachusetts, where the company was expanded and redesignated as Company A, 104th Infantry Regiment, 26th Division. 
the declaration of war on 6 April 1917, 76 men from Reading enlisted in the Massachusetts National Guard. They wanted to serve in the war with their buddies in local units. 67 Reading men served in units of the Yankee Division. More Reading soldiers served in the Yankee Division than any other unit in the United States Army. The Yankee Division was the hometown unit for all of New England. And in Reading, everyone either had a relative or a friend in the Yankee Division. Boston newspapers published articles about the Yankee Division on the front page every day. And the Boston Globe was the first newspaper ever to have an embedded reporter with an army unit, and that army unit was the Yankee Division. 60% of all Massachusetts men made up the Yankee Division, a division of 28,000, and because I'm a rider and I'm Paul Revere every couple of years, 14,000 mules and horses. The 26th was officially activated on 22 August 1917 under its charismatic leader, Major General Clarence Edwards. The 26th was quickly organized, so quickly in fact, that it began deploying in early September. The entire, the entire division arrived in France by the end of October, making the 26th Division the first full U.S. Army division to arrive in France, a remarkable achievement for a National Guard division. The Wakefield and Reading men of Company A arrived in France on 10 October 1917 and began intensive training. The 26th was one of the first U.S. divisions to enter combat when it occupied frontline trenches in early February of 1918. Reading soldiers were among the first American soldiers to engage the enemy in World War I. The Reading men of Company A were severely tested in April of 1918 during a German attack. Company A held its ground against a determined foe and then counterattacked and pushed the enemy back. For its gallantry in action, Company A and the other companies of the 104th Infantry were honored with the award of a French Army Unit Award, the Croix de Guerre another first for Reading men and the Wakefield unit of the 104th Infantry, which was the first American unit ever decorated by a foreign government. The 26th went on to see heavy combat during the war in six campaigns and tied with the 1st Division with the most days in combat. Dozens of Reading Yankee Division soldiers were wounded or gassed. I teach military history and I tell my students of all the wars ever fought by Americans, soldiers, World War I was the worst. Soldiers stood in their trenches in mud and water over their ankles. It was cold and it rained most days. Infested in the soldiers' uniforms was vermin that constantly bit. There were constant artillery shells all day and all night. And the artillery was the, most, the biggest killer on the battlefield, by the way. Rats crawled over the bodies of sleeping soldiers at night, and during attacks, the enemy launched poison gas, and to make even things worse, during the fall of 1918, all the soldiers came down with flu. The 26th was one of the first U.S. divisions to go on offensive combat during the war. During the attack on Bellow in July 1918, the local church was destroyed. After the war, the YD veterans promised to rebuild the church, which they did was dedicated in 1929. And this Bellow Church, also called the Yankee Division Memorial Church, is a shrine to the 2,168 soldiers who died in the war, and many of them buried just yards at the American Cemetery across from the church. 13,000 were wounded. Etched on the walls of this church, and I have seen, I've been to the church a number of times, are the names of the seven from Reading. Sergeant Major William S. Britton, PFC Carl L. Coombs, Private Timothy E. Cummings, PFC Clarence S. Eaton, Private Thomas Muse, PFC Ralph E. Morey, and Private William A. Riley. We honor their memory, service, and sacrifice, and of all the service men and women who have left Reading to protect our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, General. I'd like to make the next podium at Bill Brown. Good morning. Good morning. 
it's, one, it's wanting like this that uh, I remember when they was given the only volunteer opportunity in the Air Force, they said, do you want to go to Tripoli Greenland or Tripoli Libya? I said, I'll take Tripoli Libya. Thank you very much. Uh, on November 11, 1918, 11 a.m., the names of 402 men and eight women were on the honor roll at Running Common when the peace was declared in the war to end all wars. On the morning of April 19, 1919, a small group of citizens expected perhaps 500 would show up to build and dedicate what we now call Memorial Park. At 8 a.m., 5,000 men, women, and children gathered in Running Square, including a U.S. Congressman from Lowell, shovel in hand, ready to work. Would you think that of politicians wouldn't do that today? Uh, there were rich men, poor men, and the police chief. They came with picks, shovels, horse carts, motor trucks, paths were made, bushes were planted, 13 elm trees were planted, one for each of the names that were on the bowler that was brought to the park from a running found. At 2.30, a bugle was sounded, the boys removed the, men and boys removed their hats, they came to attention, a volley was fired by the members of the state guard State Guard, not National Guard, and the GAR, Grand Army of the Republic, Walter Parker laid a plaque at one of the elm trees. Taps were played, and everybody went back to work. The inscription on the bowler reads, Honor those the heroes who gave their lives that we might live in freedom. Excuse me. I often wonder why some of the names on the, were on the bowler since they were not killed in action, in, in battle, I'm sorry. The answer was found in the 1918 Selectman's Report, not Select Board at that time, and I quote, heroes are born, not made by war, or daring in the fight. The man's the hero was by chance to bring that fact to light. Chance came to those, to some through the fell disease, to some in battle strife. Here was the title due to all who thus surrendered life. On November 11, 1934, at the request of Post 62, American Legion, the bowler that we see was moved from the original location to the Salem Street entrance of this park. And by the way, I think it's already been mentioned that the Legion home on Ash Street was dedicated 104 years ago today and was donated by a gentleman, Wesley Davies. So today, we gather once again in honor of those men that gave their lives in the world to end all worlds. Thank you, and God bless America, the greatest nation on this earth. Thank you, Mr. Brown. You're always world wealth of information for me. I learn something new every day. At this time, I'd like to change, uh, go off the program. John, is there something that you wanted to uh, do? Okay. Along with uh, National Commander Konachuk, I'm a past commander of the Yankee Division Veterans Association. Uh, we'd like to present Will and uh, honor the town of Reading here with a couple of gifts. Will I can present you with this <laughs> hat? Thank you. Honorary member of the Yankee Division? Absolutely. Thank you. A little on the big side, but I'll take care of it. I thought. <laughs> Thank you. thank you for inviting us today. Please accept our, our commander's coin. Oh, well, thank you very much, General. Thank you. Also, with, uh, World War I, this coin represents World War I. This is our 100th anniversary coin in 2019. The YDVA was organized in 1919. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. And I will put these in a uh, very 
conspicuous place in my office to be seen by all who visit me on a regular basis. Notice the Boy Scouts behind me, and I know that uh, the general probably stole a little bit of thunder, but that's okay. Generals are allowed to do things like that. They are. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to bring up to the podium Alex and Zalen. Now, I'm old, and I forget their last names, but no, one, one, is, one is Puff. And it's Alex Puff, right? No. <laughs> See, they correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's okay. Come on up here. On this inscription on this uh, stone that you see here, honor the hero who gave their life so that we might live in freedom. Private Ernest H. Leach. Private William Riley. Private First Class Clarence Sawyer Eaton. Corporal Edward Walsh. Lieutenant Edward Haynes. Private First Class Ralph Morey. Private Timothy E. Cummings. Private Thomas E. Muse. Private First Class William A. White. Private Stanton Wood E. Hill. Private First Class Carl L. Combs, Sergeant First Class Hartson, Sergeant Major William G. Britton, Jr. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Zalen. Appreciate the assistance. We will now dedicate the flagpole erected and dedicated in the honor of T.J. McGrath. You see this flagpole here was donated to the town of Reading. T.J. was a National Honor Society graduate of Reading Memorial High School and a 1995 Dean's List graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. As a commissioned officer in the United States Army, TJ was airborne, air assault, and ranger qualified. Upon completion of his leadership training at Fort Benning, the leadership training at Fort Benning, TJ was assigned to the 1st Cavalry Division at Fort Hood, Texas, where he served as rifle platoon leader for 3rd Platoon, Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 7th Cavalry. Gary on. Sadly, T.J. died in an accident at Fort Hood in 1996 while serving on active duty. This time, it is Reading uh, going to play.
bugler because the sound taps, please. Let us pray. Lord God, in the rededication of the World War I Memorial Stone, we continue to remember the sacrifices of so many men and women who have served and are still serving the cause of liberty. Help us never forget them and their deeds. The torch of liberty has been passed down from generation to generation. Let us receive it with joy. Let us stand fast with them in hope that our nation continues to be a beacon of liberty and justice in a broken world. As you fill Solomon with your spirit of wisdom, fill all of us and especially our leaders with your wisdom and humility that all of us together may make our nation and the world a better place. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Father Rock. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. This concludes Reading's 2023 Veterans Day ceremony. I'd like to thank the many of those folks who made this dedication possible. Volunteers Bill Brown, Brigadier General, retired conductor, Department of Parks Mike Hannaford and his crew who prepared the site, and the countless number of my co-workers who contributed substantially to today's ceremony. Thank you all. This wouldn't have come together if I didn't have the assistance and the cooperation of everyone that's involved with this and making this happen today. So thank you. Uh, a special thanks goes out to the Reading residents who came out today to honor these veterans. Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> veterans of all eras, your sacrifice does not go unrecognized. You are to be celebrated, honor. For freedom is not free. Thank you all. And you're all invited back to the American Legion for refreshments and uh, some light foods. Uh, I hope to see you all back there. Thank you for all coming out today. I salute you. Thank you. Thank you.